Na Cynthia name in town, please. Cynthia Phillips, Wyckoff. Um, I just want to expand upon what Mr. Anch was talking about because I too have asked questions about who is ultimately responsible for the mask mandates. I also asked questions to our superintendent, as to Mr. Rishika himself, also asking the exact same question. If Mr. Rashika is not going to be held to the same standard by the teachers union, then they should issue a retraction for Mrs. LaForgia. So my question to you, to you, um, Mr. Budo, is to ask Mr. Rashika, how does he feel? If you're not being held to the same standard, shouldn't they retract that letter? I would like to, at the end of the thing, we, you guys don't always answer our questions, and I think you should really make an effort to do that, because I believe there is a policy that says at the end of the meeting that questions should be replied to. Thank you. My name is Amy Eilert. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just writing. I'm sorry, name in town, please. Can, my name is Amy Eilert, and I'm from Oakland. Okay, go ahead. Okay. This is now the second consecutive absence for our Board of Education President, Ms. LaForgia. The agenda clearly states in red bold lettering that members of the community may only address the President. Yet, once again, she is not here. It's concerning and disheartening that she has not taken her role as BOE president serious enough to show up and perform her elected duties, though she is able to attend local partisan clubs like the Republican Club functions to hand out her campaign flyers. This is a clear conflict of interest and a violation of the New Jersey Schools Ethics Act. In accordance with the School Ethics Act, NJSA 18A 12-21, Board of Education members must avoid conduct which is in violation of the public trust or which creates a justifiable impression among the public that such trust is being violated. To avoid contact that may be in violation or perceived to be in violation of the School Ethics Act, the Board of Education adopts this policy to provide guidance to board members in their use of social networks. I encourage everybody to read it. Residents are well aware of Ms. LaForge's pervasive activist affiliations, including Moms for Liberty, where she repeatedly posted links to our district BOE meetings for, quote, like-minded people to, quote, fill up seats, and that she has allowed her personal agenda to influence the proper function and goals of our Board of Education. Board of Ed members, including the President, especially the President, must abide by the New Jersey School Ethics Act. Allowing this breach of public trust must not go without a consequence. Again, people are watching. Your personal political agendas, for all of you, have no place here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other members of the public? How much time do we have left? Any other members uh, wish to step up? Okay. Uh, seeing none, um, can I get a motion to close the public discussion? No. Motion to close the public session. So we got Mr. Carolyn and Mr. Kinney. Okay, so um, let's answer some of the questions. Uh, so the first question was on students did not celebrate the Constitution on Constitution Day. Do you want to take that, Mr. Uh, Rasika? Um, unfortunately, I was not here at the time. Um, I know that in most cases it is reviewed in uh, history classes and other places as well. Uh, you don't have to make a full day celebration out of it uh, as long as it is acknowledged in some way, and I will look back and I'm sure that uh, there was something that took place uh, for Constitution Day, but I will check. Okay. So the next question was on an ESIP, and um, if committees saw this presentation uh, prior to tonight's presentation, um, finance committees met and last week, and uh, 
we did see the presentation before this evening, and the facilities committee met. Um, I'm not sure of any other committee. Any other committee see it prior to tonight? No? Okay. So, let me just finish. Well. <laughs> Can I finish? And then I'll call on you. So the uh, presentation that was presented tonight um, was something that was brought to us by our uh, business administration as um, a, a potential option for the district to take advantage of energy savings and at the same time uh, using a bonding me mechanism with that savings to leverage um, purchasing um, energy efficient equipment. Um, the presentation tonight was to the public, but two committees, uh, as far as I know, um, did approve the presentation for you to see tonight. Um, it's, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Lamb, and then I'll recognize Mrs. King on this, but uh, that's my understanding of this. Uh, that is correct, Mr. Budo, and I believe uh, Ms. Souders also asks uh, how we uh, decided to ask DCO to present. Uh, both myself uh, and other business administrators are members of New Jersey Association of School Business Officials. Uh, they also have professional members, and DCO is one of the hundreds of professional members. Uh, and those professional members do provide workshops and uh, training and presentations to our membership throughout the year. And so that was the thought behind having a vendor present uh, to our committees and then to the public. Uh, and why we selected or asked DCO to present, uh, I received feedback from other business administrators uh, uh, that DCO would be a great vendor to present, and, uh, and they were willing, and so we presented them to the committees, and then the two committees suggested that we present uh, to the public at the board meeting, and the rest of the board members, of course. Thank you. Um, Mrs. King? So thank you for your question, Ms. Soders. Um, we as board members do not run the schools, and Mr. Lamb um, is the, you know, the direct report, the director of facilities reports directly to him. So when he brought this um, to my committee um, and asked if they could do a presentation, I thought it was a great opportunity to learn um, the money saving because we do dictate you know, how the money gets spent and we have to approve that. So I found the, um, I, I thought it was great, Mr. Lamb, and I found the presentation to be very informative. So thank you. Okay, so there was one question um, that Cynthia Phillips had with regards to same standards um, with regard to um, how people treated Ms. LaForgia and when she was at, in a meeting with regard to masking and um, when you came back, I guess, last week. I don't know how you want to answer that, but if you don't answer that any way you like. All right. Sure. Um, looking at that, there were, there were a few people. I did discuss in advance uh, the possibility of canceling any meetings where people were uh, not wearing masks. Uh, that was not taken kindly. Uh, so we did manage to work out a plan where we would use that section for people who are not wearing a mask or wearing them under their chins. Um, it was not, that was taken favorably, I think, by the entire board. We don't want to see anybody uh, separated from us. I would just like people to follow some of the, some of the mandates that are incorporated. Um, so we did have flexibility with that. Unfortunately, again, uh, sitting here, we did notice another, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 people that took their mask off um, and makes it difficult for us. Uh, no one here wants to be in a position uh, to cause a confrontation in any way, but there are certain things we have to follow, and the mandate's one of them. I know it's not a law, but it's a mandate that we have to follow. Um, so I'll make that clear. Um, also, if you don't mind, I'm gonna jump back to Mr. Anch. Um, back to school night, as you indicated in your letter to me, we were concerned about the kids. 
Okay, so if we have um, over 2,400 students in the, in the district and we look at two parents coming, which I don't think we would get that or had that, uh, we're, we're potentially putting a lot of bodies in a school in close distance with the different variants that I speak from experience after spending uh, six weeks totally out of it <laughs> uh, based on COVID and, and the after effects of having uh, bilateral pneumonia. I don't want to see children go through what I did. Uh, so the science, unfortunately, was biased on my experience. Uh, I was, again, my experience was being in the Valley Hospital in the COVID ward, and I saw children that were having difficulties. I don't want that for any of our students. That's the bottom line. It wasn't based on politics. Just want to make that clear. Uh, Ms. Phillips, I believe I did get back to you this afternoon. Um, I just want to make it clear again. The wearing of the mask, you look at it here, every board member is wearing a mask. Uh, we're following our mandates. Uh, we enforce it during the school day, and we expect everybody that's working in the schools, visiting in the schools, to do the same thing. It's as simple as that. That's where we are. So I hope that helps a little bit. Uh, as far as looking at the mandates on curriculum, there are certain dates that we needed to have these things completed. Uh, and that's the important part, is the, meeting those dates. We talk about QSAC. QSAC's important for us. We score points in every area, and certainly we're not looking to lose any points in education. So um, I, I know that you know we can look back and say that some of these uh, requirements were already in the curriculum, but there were some additional updates. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Ms. Souders, I'm, if you don't mind, I'm just going to address. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Souders came up, and I, I want to make it clear. The accelerated learning process is similar to what we did over the summer. Uh, we thought that since we had the funding for this, that we would continue that throughout the school year. So. As of uh, yesterday, I think we have 17 teachers willing to teach the different courses. So that information will be coming out there. Uh, and again, this will be made available for uh, students who, if they need extra help, will make it available uh, and support them in a supplemental fashion. Um, and those students who want to move ahead a little bit, that'll be there as well. So uh, that's basically where that's at. Okay. And I do apologize because I meant to respond to your email. And as, as if you don't know, I just came back at the district last week. All right. So trying to catch up. Thank you. Uh, so I got those. I don't think I missed anybody. Ms. Amolo. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. Uh, on the Pelestis report. Yeah. We find that to be very important. Uh, I'm already sitting down and having discussions uh, with special ed department. I've already started discussions with the incoming superintendent. Uh, in fact, we are scheduled for another meeting tomorrow. I'm sorry, on Wednesday. Uh, and this is one of the main topics. So the goal here is to start any changes immediately for this school year. So we want to focus on those that we can accomplish within the next few months throughout the school year and then build upon that. So